Wow! <laughs> oh my god. Hey guys, as you may or may not know, Sipsoft released two new servers on Tuesday the 17th, Beniva and Veludera, and as you saw in that last clip, I had a pretty rough first day. Originally I wasn't very excited for these worlds, but after some thought, I figured why not give them a shot. At the very least, it would give me some practice on starting from scratch in case a new hardcore world comes out, and I might even have some fun. Well, I did have a lot of fun. I tried to level as fast as I could, and I was tied for first by the time I had to log out for the day, and I was still rank 7 when the high scores updated at server save. I did use a day of voucher to stay ahead of the curve and get to the good respawns, but this was an eye-opening experience for what I'm going to do if a retro hardcore world ever comes out. So I wanted to show you guys with some highlights from the first day and what I did that was good and what I did that was bad so you guys who haven't started a character yet can get up quickly or take notes for next time. Keep in mind there's a ton of different strategies you can use. I didn't come across the top druid or any of the paladins while I played, so this isn't the one you have to follow, but this one worked for me and I'm going to optimize it next time so I can potentially be rank 1 and not have to worry about getting killed by anyone higher than me. So first off, it was just dawn port as usual. Sipsoft said these servers were coming out in the afternoon, but I happened to wake up early and when I checked my phone I saw that the worlds were already out and people were in main. I thought all was lost at that point, but I went to my usual spawn in dawn port and got 8 pretty fast. I always grab all the potions and then go through the sorcerer area, but being a druid probably works too. I like to go to the goblin cave over by the paladin area. There's tons of goblins down there and dwarves even deeper. I find not many people walk all the way over here because most head straight for the minotaurs. After getting level 8 I went straight to Port Hope. I figured I could knock out a crocodile task and maybe loot a knight armor, but it's been a while since I started a character from scratch without having a set or supplies and boy was I in for a surprise. The crocodiles ripped me apart and I died twice just trying to clear the area down the hole and get my loot back. No, You gotta be fucking me. You die? I'm going to. I died. Eventually I managed and I hunted crocodiles for a while, but then it hit me. Yalahar. Why didn't I try to be the first to Yalahar? When Eldera first came out last year, my friend Darius and I were the first two to Yalahar and we had every spawn to ourselves. So I rushed to Kaz and tried to find a Dwarven pickaxe, but the easy one was already taken. If you don't know where to find pickaxes, there are a few easy spots. The Kaz mines where you just saw me check and down throughout the tunnels. I managed to find one in probably the easiest cave. It's right down the staircase. I was surprised no one had taken it yet. After grabbing it, I turned it into the Explorer Society in Port Hope and then rushed to collect 400 gold for the boat between Liberty Bay and Yalahar. By the way, I was able to get from town to town using the Adventurer's Guild. If you didn't know, you have 6 free teleports with every character that you can use to get between every town except Yalahar, Zhao, and I believe Oramond. So after getting 400 gold in the Swamp Trolls, I went straight to the Yalahar Minotaur spawn. This spawn is great because you can get decent experience and a ton of loot you can throw into a loot bag and sell back in town. Doing this, I was able to afford money for a wand of Dragon Breath and manas easily. This is also where I got headshot by the Minotaur Archer you saw at the beginning. I had no idea they could shoot you over there when you walked up the stairs. So people started to get to Yalahar by this time, so I went to one of my favorite tried and true spawns, the Yalahar Cemetery. This spawn was around 50k an hour or so because I was on double. On a normal world you can still get 50k here on green with no double if you hunt the east cave, but it's really dangerous for a new player with no supplies so I only hunted there a little bit. I did a little team hunting with some friends in the mutated humans, but the experience was too slow because we had two sorcerers and one druid so I left them be. They would get more experience without me and I was doing just fine in the cemetery. I got some more cash in the minotaurs to buy more manas and then I tried soloing mutated humans by myself, but it didn't work out well. After those two suicides, I went back to the cemetery. Should have just stayed there the whole time, but oh well. I wasn't going to let those deaths stop me, I was on double anyways. I finally took level 20 and went and did the 10k quest. No, I wasn't a part of the first team, but they did come back through a second time just for me. Thanks guys. Now with that cash, I was ready to PG. I took my 10k and capped as many manas as I could and headed to the tarantulas in Port Hope. If you haven't seen my other video, I chose the spawn because the tunnels are longer and you don't run into so many tarantulas in one spot popping up a hole. I hunted here for an entire task hoping to get some night legs from the boss which I could leave on the market overnight, but of course I got this shit again. God damn. Steel helmet, 500 GP time ring. Seriously? <laughs> Every so time. I don't know if I'm just unlucky, but I'm never doing that task again. I honestly believe now that the loot got nerfed hard. By now I was level 25, so at least I got good experience from the task, but I needed profit bad. I went back to mutated humans by myself. I knew they wouldn't be profit at my current level, but eventually they would pay off around 30 probably. I was making around 100k per hour on double with no green stamina, so this spawn was great experience. At the end of the day I was level 29, and sadly, I had to leave. 
I played for a total of 7 hours to get to this point, and it was well worth it. I had a lot of fun and met a lot of cool people in English chat. If you're looking for people to play with, I highly suggest starting here. I've played hardcore PvP since its inception and never thought I would go back to non-PvP, but new worlds are a ton of fun and I'm actually kind of excited to try to be a part of the first Orc Fort, Banshee Quest, Annihilator, POI, etc. So long as they don't allow transfers, I think I'll continue to play here since nothing is really going on on my home world. I can't wait to see how the server turns out considering this is the first world in a year that hasn't been corrupted by a boss bug or the Hellgate tasks. Thanks for watching guys, and if you currently play Veladera, feel free to send me a message. If I'm not PGing, I'm always down to chat, and once I get a higher level, I'll be looking for some people to team hunt with. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll optimize the strategy I just showed you and tell you exactly how to get rank 1 Sorcerer or Druid the next time a new world comes out, which hopefully is retro hardcore PvP. You don't want to get left behind. See you next time.